Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here to do another round of recent reads talking about science fiction and fantasy. With the exception of one book, these are all new 2020 releases. I have a good variety here. I always say that, but honestly, all of these books are so different from each other. So I'm hoping that you will find something here that appeals to you. All that being said, let's get started. First, let's talk science fiction, and I read Goldilocks by Laura Lamb. This is a book that I requested from Orbit Books, and this is set in a near future where there are five astronauts, five female astronauts specifically, that are going off in space to start a colony on a planet in the Goldilocks zone. You find out that according to scientists, humanity only has about 30 years left on Earth, so it is very important that we start to establish another place to live. And with that, these women take up the beginnings of that new adventure. Now from the synopsis, I was very excited to pick this one up. I love science fiction with a very feminist appeal to it, but I do think that the marketing around this book did a disservice because that is all that's on the blurb of this book, but I'm gonna let you know something, and I don't consider this a spoiler because you find it out within, I wanna say the first three pages of chapter one. But what they don't tell you on the blurb is the fact that these astronauts are actually going on an unauthorized mission. So originally these five women were selected to go and start the colony. However, NASA and the government ended up pulling them back and replacing them with an all male crew. And so they decide to basically steal the rocket. They go up in space without permission and they sneak off in the night. And when it's too late, they are gone. And the story follows them as they head towards this planet. Now I wanna mention it because because I feel like knowing that really changes the tone of the story. And for me, this was no longer a story about heroic women, but a book about thieves. Now you do find out that this future is not the feminist future that I hoped it would be, but you actually find out that in this future of America, women's rights have actually been pulled back. And that is part of the reason why these women were stripped of their command of this mission is that it's considered to be okay the fact that they were all replaced by men. While, of course, I do not approve or agree with those decisions, I found that their reaction to it of going about and taking government property and taking things into their own hands without permission, without backup from these organizations was just very irresponsible. And so knowing that just changed my whole opinion of this book. And so I went into it expecting one thing and got a different experience. Now from the synopsis, a lot of people think this is like a mystery or a thriller and it's really not. It's very much a character book. It does have a little bit of hard science, but for the most part, it's very readable. It's technically set in a future where of course we have advanced enough to colonize another planet, but in every other respect, it really feels still like the near present day because there isn't a lot of references to technologies that we don't already have. My favorite aspects of this book centered around the botanist who is responsible for taking care of growing food on the ship and there's a lot of really good paragraphs and chapters that focus on her growing algae and other kinds of food sources and I really love those chapters. Those were the ones that reminded me of The Martian by Andy Weir so if you enjoy the parts of that book that involve potato farming then you'll probably really enjoy these aspects. So there are things I definitely liked about this book but it was a little bit of a letdown. I did find the characters for the most part to be a little bit one dimensional. One of the characters is more fleshed out than the others, but for the most part, I just didn't feel overly attached to the characters. And again, a lot of it came from my initial bias when I felt like I went into this book expecting one thing and found something very different. So if you go into this book, just know the premise going into it, know what you're going to get. And if that still sounds good, absolutely check it out. There's a lot of good things in this book. I was just very much much betrayed by my own expectations, unfortunately, and it definitely affected my opinion of it. Next, I want to talk about The Seep by Hannah Porter, and this is a book about an alien invasion, but it's not your typical one. There is no violence here. Instead, the aliens slowly creep into our culture in a very soft or gentle way. When people come into contact with these aliens, they become very passive, and through this interaction, the seep as they're called, 
basically transform humans and their society into a utopia. So people become very agreeable, they no longer care about capitalism, and they actually become vegan. And it's just this idea that the seep takes away all of the negative aspects to our society, but as science fiction books go, sometimes humans don't always want a utopia. The story specifically follows one older trans woman who is of Native American descent, and she is living with her spouse. However, her wife decides that she wants to become a baby again and actually leaves her in order to become a child. And from there, the main character becomes very depressed and is just very dissatisfied with what should be this perfect society, but again, kind of points out the fact that sometimes we just don't want things to be perfect, and sometimes we actually enjoy things that aren't good for us or aren't necessarily necessarily what we should do, but just simply what we want to do. And so it's an interesting concept, but I'm learning that I'm not a fan of weird science fiction, and this book was so weird. I am going to try not to overuse that word in this review, but yeah, this book was ridiculously weird at the beginning. I enjoyed it, but very soon I just got turned off by the weirdness and it didn't work for me. However, if you are a fan of the subgenre of weird sci-fi, then you might really enjoy this one. Again, it has some really interesting ideas. So if you're more someone who leans on the side of intellectual science fiction and just like to explore ideas in your fiction, then this one might be one to check out. But personally, I didn't end up enjoying it. I also read a book called 88 Names by Matt Matt Ruff, which is about a group that starts a business that allows people to experience the top end content of video games, online multiplayer games specifically, without having to do the work of leveling up. Instead, this group just pulls them through the content, lets them do all the dungeons. Within the story, there is a bit of a mystery because one of their clients seems to have some political background and there is this political scheme that comes out of the story. I don't want to say too much but I picked up this book because I'm a big fan of stories that involve VR technology and video games, so I thought this one would be right up my alley. Unfortunately, I did find it very dry, and my biggest complaint is that I don't feel like the author knew his audience because I feel like for the most part, people who already like video games are gonna be the ones drawn to read this book, like myself. However, the author spent a lot of time info dumping and explaining the different terms of video games and online multiplayers. And for me, it just felt very redundant and unnecessary. And I feel like if you're not a fan of video games, if you think they're a waste of time, you're probably not gonna pick up this book. You're probably not the audience anyway. So I just don't really think that the author realized who was gonna be picking up this book and just kind of overwrote the explanations when he really didn't need to. And I also read The Test by Sylvain Nouvelle, which is a very short novella about an Iranian man who is taking a test to become a citizen of another country. He is an immigrant and is looking for a fresh start. And this book is one that I can't say too much about without spoiling, but just know that he starts to take this test and then there is something that happens and the book takes a very dark turn. This book is often compared to Black Mirror and I definitely see why. I don't want to say why that is, is because spoilers, but I definitely recommend reading it all the way through. You definitely need to experience the full story in order to understand what's fully happening. And it was very gripping. I think it talks a lot about morality as well as immigrant experience. I'm not totally sure how good the representation was, but in terms of just being a gripping story, this definitely was that. And I do recommend it to those of you that like some science fiction with a darker side. And finally, let's talk fantasy. And I read Shore Fall by Robert Jackson Bennett, which is the second book in the Foundries trilogy. And don't worry, even if you haven't read book one Foundry side, I'm gonna keep this totally spoiler free. The series starts with a woman who is a thief and ends up stealing a piece of technology that has a lot of political ramifications for the economic powerhouses in her community. But what I love so much about this book is the characters and more so the magic system. And those aspects were just drawn out and expanded upon in the second book. I really liked the dynamics between the characters. I think you got to see a lot of their relationships fleshed out even more. I especially liked the developments around the lesbian couple, which in my opinion, the first book was a little bit thrown together and wasn't overly well developed. In this one, we get to see more of their interactions and there is a twist in the story that makes their relationship 
relationship so much more interesting. As well, I love the banter between the non-romantic relationships. I definitely found myself just enjoying their friendships and just the connections that they all share. And of course, for me, I'm always here first and foremost for the magic system, which is very hard and satisfying for someone like me who likes a lot of rules. In this world, there is a magic system called scribing, which almost allows objects to be coded with instructions to behave differently than what they should be doing. And I always find this to be very fascinating and you get to see this expanded in this book. And I really like to see how the characters manipulated the scribed objects and interacted with them. There's a lot of humor in this book and everything that you enjoyed in book one, for those of you that have read Foundry Side, you were gonna find it once again in book two. It's absolutely solid. It does not suffer from second book slump. And yes, it does end on a bit of a cliffhanger. It's not a completely satisfying ending, as you would expect from a book that has another one coming. So I'm very much looking forward to book three, and this series is quickly becoming one of my favorites. So that is it for this video. As always, I would love your opinions down below, especially if you're planning on picking up any of the books I mentioned here. There were definitely some hits and misses in this group. And again, I'm hoping that something will entice you because I just adore science fiction fantasy these days. I've been reading a lot of it. And so I did wanna get some reviews out to you about some of the more current books I've been reading. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.